right, welcome back to the second lecture on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And in particular, what I want to talk about is a, a demonstration of the power of eigenvalues and eigenvectors through an application I'm going to call eigenfaces. It's one of the very interesting early applications in some sense of data science and understanding the power of using uh, representations of data or features of data to be able to make some actionable decisions and machine intelligence decisions. And so this really started very early on and this eigenface application I want to talk about uh, it does two things. First, it starts to generalize our concept of what we're going to be thinking about in terms of uh, matrices themselves. So far we've been thinking about it for this course in terms of the matrices represent systems of equations or something that comes out of a physics-based model. But here we're going to start thinking about matrices just being collections of data and what does an eigenvalue and eigenvector for that data mean. So uh, more notes and a link to the class website is here. So just below in the description you can hit that uh, link and you'll go to the class website where you'll see uh, a broader range of lectures as well as notes, data, code, everything you need for this class. Okay, so let's get to it. So what I want to talk about with eigenfaces and eigenvalues is first I want to do is I want to bring in an image. I want to bring in an image uh, that is typically in pixel space and then I want to convert it into uh, a vector is what I really would like to do. And so here's some code both in Python and MATLAB. And in code in MATLAB, uh, Python, this is you can find it on the website, these are some important features that we might import from Python in order for us to bring in images and to start thinking about as images as vectors. So for instance here, once I've got all of this, uh, these packages loaded, I would say, for instance, here F1C, this is going to be a picture of Roger, Roger Federer, for instance, uh, it's the uh, first picture of Roger Federer in color, so that's what the F1C stands for, first Fe Federer picture in color. I use the imread command, image read command, so image dot image read fed1.jpg. So it goes in, in the file, so this folder pulls in this JPEG image, and once you've pulled in this JPEG image, Normally what happens, it's in pixel space, so it has that representation, and since it's a color figure, it also has an RGB representation. In other words, each color picture has a red, green, and blue pixel designation. And so really what this is, is the number of pixels in the X and the Y direction plus three layers of, of colors. So it's, a, it's basically, in, it's, a, it's a generalization of a matrix to what's called a tensor. It's a collection of data, which is a data cube in some sense, right? So it's got thickness 3, which is the RGB, along with pixels in X and pixels in Y. But what I'm going to do with this is I just want to use it as a matrix. And so what I do is use the command RGB to gray, which turns it from color to grayscale. And so once I've done this, now I've flattened this down. And I can even resize it. So if I've got a bunch of figures and I want to make them a standard number of pixels, I've resized this to 120 by 80 pixels. So that allows you to do this resize, which allows us now to work in a common framework across all of our images because they'll all be the same size. I can also do this in MATLAB <clears throat> by, the, again, I am read, image read command. Here it is. Here's a picture of, let's say, Clooney, JPEG. So I have a picture of George Clooney here. I'll just show you in a minute. And I pull this in. I can do the same command, RGB to gray, here it is. So it's gonna convert it from a color map, which is has the red, green, blue designation down to just a grayscale. And then normally when you're in picture frames or picture uh, pictures have a very different uh, representation in terms of what the numbers mean. And so the double command turns it now to double precision numbers. So now I can do math with it. So for instance, I'd find eigenvectors and eigenvalues Whereas if I don't do this, it's in a format called uint8, which means it's a bunch of integers that take values between 1 to 255, and you can't do standard matrix manipulations with these numbers. Finally, I resize this just like I did before. I am resize, and 
I resize it to 120 by 80. So the point of these two codes is very simple. How do I read in a piece of data, which in this case is an image, that I first turn it into a grayscale and then I make it so that all the sizes are the same, 120 by 80. And so these two pieces of code are sort of like starters for you to be able to import images because part of what we're gonna do is now start to manipulate images and start understanding what eigenvalues and eigenvectors mean in the context of face images. So I have a code that does this. I'm not gonna go through the code in detail because you can download it off of the website. But here, for instance, are a set of pictures. And I have very few pictures, actually. Normally, when you want to do something like this, you'd want to do a large number of pictures with a lot of data. But for the purposes of showing some of the important features of what we're going to be looking at, this will do just fine. Okay. So what you'll see here is in the top row, I have five pictures. And this is George Clooney. Here you go. So five pictures. Notice that I've cropped the face roughly the same for all of these images. The second row, I have. Barack Obama, there we go, five pictures. Notice that there's quite a diverse set of backgrounds behind these faces, right? Some are, some are dark, some are light. Uh, in either case, though, I've got the, the face pretty well centered in the frame. Uh, Margaret Thatcher is here, okay? And again, mostly these faces are looking head on into the camera. However, there are some slight turns of the head, um, which are good. And then Matt Damon, here we go, Matt Damon is right down here, five pictures of Matt Damon. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take each one of these images, which is I've downscaled them to 120 pixels in this direction, 80 in this direction. So it's 120 by 80 for each one of these pictures. And what we're gonna do is start to use eigenvectors and eigenvalues to start to identify for us common features in images. Uh, and right away, a couple things I want to highlight to you. So we're here looking at these images. And again, I've already said it's 120 by 80. And what we're going to do with each one of these images is we're going to turn them into a vector. So we're going to think about 120 by 80 being there are 80 columns here. And so we can take those 80 columns and stack them up on top of each other into a very long, skinny vector. Or we can lay it across as a large row vector. This is called data flattening. So this is done commonly for many data sources in which you have various things that you measure. For instance, here, this is the pixel space in X and Y. I could also take the RGB cube. But data flattening takes all of these things and just takes them, reshapes whatever tensor you have into a large vector. Test, test. So that's what we're gonna do to collect this data. And here I have 20 images, which means I'm gonna create 20 vectors. And because the 20 vectors are 120 by 80, each vector is gonna be length 120 times 80, okay? So this is what we have as our data. This is gonna com comprise our, our matrix A. By the way, I could also look at, this is sort of an interesting just observation, which is I could take all of these George Clooney pictures, and I could average them. So just add them together, divide by five, because I got five pictures. Same thing with Obama, Thatcher, and Jason Bourne. And what you would find is the following, right? So here are these faces, which are sort of their average faces. So I start here with Clooney, there's Obama. Um, and already you can see that, in fact, you can still see a lot of features here, and you can still recognize that person even though the quality is pretty poor. So one of the questions that we always ask is, uh, so clearly there's something here that your eye is using to make a recognition decision about who these people are. Uh, even if I don't give you a high quality picture, you know who they are, you could label them because you know I'm working with four different people. And it's not like you look here at George Clooney and think that's Margaret Thatcher. In fact, it's pretty clear it's not. Or that you look here and see uh, Matt Damon and, or that you think it's Margaret Thatcher or Clooney or Obama. You, you look at it and it's pretty clear that that's the Matt Damon picture. So despite the low quality, it's very easy for us to make these recognition decisions. 
And part of what we want to get after here with eigenvectors and eigenvalues is how do we actually approach this to think about ways, what, what are the features that we're actually maybe going after here that allow us to see uh, and make these identification decisions. So part of what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start to do an eigenvalue, eigenvector analysis of this data. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to take and arrange these images into, let's say, a matrix B. And the matrix B is just going to be each one of those images. Remember, I have 20 images here. And in general, if you do, uh, you know, production level, industrial level <laughs> data analysis, this is going to be thousands, millions, tens of millions of images where you want to start understanding the features between faces. But here we have 20 images, which means there's going to be 20 rows to this matrix. First, I'm going to take the first image. I'm going to vectorize it as a row vector. So I'm going to take this thing, and it's going to be a row whose length is 120 times 80 long. That's how long this first row is. And let's say that's the first picture of George Clooney, and then the second picture of George Clooney. And then I put Barack Obama's, Margaret Thatcher's, Matt Damon's, all together, 20 rows which have 120 times 80 columns. So that's my data matrix. And I'm going to use that data matrix to start doing analysis of faces. And this is, again, one of the earliest versions of really doing some very interesting data science and feature extraction from matrices that we have uh, around, around face recognition. So the big thing I'm going to do with this matrix is create what's called a correlation matrix. I'm basically going to take that matrix B, transpose it, multiply by itself. And what this is allowing me to do is start to look at correlations among these vectors. What does it mean to have correlations among the vectors? Well, if I take one of those vectors, which just say is the kth image, and I take the inner product with the jth image, if I take the inner product of those two vectors, what I'm really looking at is their correlation, right? So if the inner product is zero, that means they have nothing to do with each other. And if they're normalized vectors, and if I take that inner product and it's one, that means I have a high degree of correlation among them. So what this is actually allowing me to do, so you notice how we've changed the context of what's going on in that matrix and that data. When we take inner products now, and these projections are telling us something about correlation. How are two different columns, or rows in this case, how are two different rows of this matrix here correlated with each other? And I can get that information by taking a dot product. And if that dot product is zero, that means they are orthogonally have nothing to do with each other. But if the dot product is one, and these, let's say these were normalized, then they would mean it's exactly the same image. So what you're looking at to see is how does that dot product change across all those faces? Not only how do George Clooney faces look relative to each other, but how did George Clooney faces project or dot product with Margaret Thatcher or Barack Obama or Matt Damon? So that's the kind of thing that we're actually calculating here in this C matrix is correlation. So now we've turned our interpretation of this matrix. The matrix is data. It's not solving some three by three system or solving for currents and with resistors and so forth. This is actually just straight data and our inner product tells us something about correlations. So how do you do that in Python or MATLAB? Here are some basic code structures to do that. So I am gonna import from NumPy, uh, from a linear algebra called LA because what we're going to do is eigenvalue decomposition. I'm going to call the, I'm going to LA is going to be this linear algebra package. So I can just simply do V comma D. So first of all, I compute, I create the matrix B and I already showed you how to read in images. And so now you take these images, you stack them on top of each other to make the B. And then I matrix multiply B times B transpose. So that's matrix multiply and that creates my correlation matrix C. And then I can actually find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors just by simply, here's the eigenvectors, here's the eigenvectors by la.eig. So this is calling the linear algebra package. I could have just said linalg.eigc or la.eigc, whichever one. But there is a little code structure for doing it. In MATLAB, here you go. C is B times B. And actually, I think to have this backwards, this just should have been just B times B transpose over here. Apologies for that. Okay, and then 
you just use the IGS command and you get back V and D. Now notice here with IGS, I'm actually doing something a little more sophisticated than up here, which is I'm taking it, taking that matrix C, putting it in there. And what I'm doing is I can ask, I only want the top 20 eigenvalues sorted by the largest magnitude. So this is a very simple statement, which allows me to get eigenvalues and eigenvectors to this in a very efficient way where I can specify what I want, which is the largest magnitude, and I only want 20 instead of all possible eigenvalues, eigenvectors. You can do something similar here in Python as well, but this is the code structure for executing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors on this correlation matrix here, okay? And like I said, apologies, that, that prime should have been over here. Okay, so what do we get from this? Once we've executed these, I wanna talk about the interpretation. And what I'm showing you here on this plot is I'm showing you five, these are five faces, they look like faces, they look like very warped faces in some sense or kind of uh, weird, but what they are, these are eigenfaces. So I got the eigenvector, which is of length 120 times 80. I reshaped it back to 100. So it was length 120 times 80. Now I've reshaped it back to 120 by 80. And this is the dominant eigenface. This is the second eigenface, the third eigenface. So these are just eigenvectors. But these eigenvectors, remember, they're a coordinate system. And in this coordinate system, you start to see the features that we can use to do face identification. So let's talk about these features. The first feature is interesting because what does it really have for us? If you look at this, right, you see that what this first feature is, is sort of in some sense, the most common thing that all faces have. So first of all, it's round <laughs> or oblong. You got some eyes, it has a little bit of a feature of a mouth, but then you really you have this hair face separation. So every single one of the faces I showed you, there was clearly a feature where the forehead ends to the hair. It has eyes and nose and mouth. And this here really picks up a lot of that basic feature. So it's, you, it's very hard to tell the difference between any face because this is just a common feature across all the faces. And in fact, what I'm showing you here on this picture is the eigenvalues and they're what the actual values of these largest magnitude eigenvalues are. Notice the first one, which is that one, is much bigger than the others. So it's quite a bit bigger. Look at this. This goes to 10 to the 10. The next one's at 10 to the 8. So this is like two orders of magnitude bigger than the others. Okay? So that tells you something important about what this eigenvector is picking up. It's picking up these dominant features that all faces have. The second eigenvector, here it is. You can start to see a little bit more of the eye structure, ears, mouth. Same thing with the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And in fact, one thing I wanna point out, it's around the third and the fourth that you start actually starting to see some teeth. Remember that out of those pictures originally, there was only about four or five of the images where teeth was shown. So eventually, teeth shows up as one of the features in this thing. So the idea here is all those faces could be represented as a linear combination of these features or these eigenvectors. Okay? So another way to think about this from the data science perspective is this is now a feature space. In this feature space, we can start now to represent any generic face because we can take a new face and project it onto these eigenvectors to get some idea of how some new face or new person's face would project relative to the other faces that we have here. Okay? So it's kind of an interesting concept. We've turned this idea of an eigenvector into a coordinate system, and this is an eigenface coordinate system. It allows us to start thinking about how could I use this to do face identification or, uh, you know, person identification. In fact, this is one of the earliest things that we start thinking about for this, and this is all the way back in the late 80s. So in fact, just to make this more concrete, I'm going to take the average Clooney face, Obama face, Thatcher, or Matt Damon face, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take those average, their, their average face, which is the average over the five, 
and I'm going to project it onto those first 20 eigenvectors. So here's what George Clooney looks like projected onto those. Here is what Obama looks like projected onto those. Here's what Thatcher looks like on those. Here's what Matt Damon looks like on those. And notice, these are quite different. And this is exactly what we can use to start to do a classification task, which allows us to identify Clooney versus Matt Damon. What is the difference? Well, look at Matt Damon. Look at these very strong signatures, positive and then negative, on the first five eigenvectors, whereas Clooney's have a very different structure there. Same thing with Obama has very different structure here, very low representation on the higher modes. Thatcher has something different. So in other words, each one of these are like keys. They're like a key for representing one of these faces. So if I gave you a new face, uh, and I didn't tell you if it was George Clooney or Margaret Thatcher or Barack Obama or Matt Damon. I just gave you a face and I said, okay, I want your computer to tell me whose face this is. What you would do is you would take that face, take it as a 120 by 80 image. You would take, you would reshape it, take its inner product on the first 20 eigenvectors, for instance, and you would look to see, does it look more like this, like this, like this, or like this? And whichever one it looked most like, you would then make a classification decision and say, I think that's Matt Damon because when I project the face, it looks most like this set of weights onto the eigenvectors. Remember, we're all projecting onto these eigenvectors, which is the feature space, which are given right by here. I've only shown you the first five, but I can take the first 20, okay? And so this becomes a really interesting concept for doing face recognition. This is, like I said, one of the earliest versions of this was just saying, let's just use eigenvectors and eigenvalues as a coordinate system. And it does a remarkable job in getting you information about this. And that really started off this trend of thinking about like, wait a minute, we can use a lot of these linear algebra methods to build pretty sophisticated tools for face recognition. And of course, in the last decade or so, that has all moved towards deep learning. But the concept of a feature space still exists there. And this is really what set down the basis of understanding how to do face recognition with this idea of a feature space. So let's continue on this little fun little exercise. And I'm going to go ahead and take uh, a picture, for instance. Here's one of the pictures in the training data set. This is Margaret Thatcher. And uh, actually, I think I believe this was a new image of Margaret Thatcher, not in my five that I contained. Or So I built this. Right, I, I took 20 pictures, I built this thing out, and what I did is I said, let me take a new picture of Margaret Thatcher, let's project this new picture onto the eigenvectors, and here's what I get. And what I could do is saying, hey, let's try to reconstruct Margaret Thatcher, this picture, in terms of this eigenvector basis, and notice what it does. It actually gives you back a face that kind of looks like Margaret Thatcher. And in fact, I can look at the error of this new face against her five pictures, and here's where they are. And so, for instance, one of them is very close to one of the pictures there. So this is kind of an interesting concept. New, new picture, I project it onto the eigenvectors, and actually what I get out is something that looks pretty similar to, uh, you know, roughly it looks like Margaret Thatcher. I can also take Meryl Streep here, and Meryl Streep, played Margaret Thatcher in The Iron Lady. This was a movie, I think she was nominated for Academy Award, of course, as usual. And we can take her projected onto Margaret Thatcher, and here's what we get. It's actually quite different than here. And so part of what you're doing is saying, how does her likeness, playing Margaret Thatcher, actually stack up to images of Margaret Thatcher? And so if I reconstruct with these onto the eigenvectors I have, I get something that doesn't look like Margaret Thatcher very much. And in fact, the error between this, her representation, and the other pictures are quite large compared to, they can be pretty small in the, uh, with this other picture of Margaret Thatcher. Finally, I take Hillary Rodham Clinton. There we go. Project onto here. And again, she does not look a whole lot like Margaret Thatcher, um, but she does look more like Margaret Thatcher than 
than we do with uh, with our representation of cinema uh, uh, here as, as as someone playing Margaret Thatcher. So anyway, these are kind of fun games you can play uh, with these representations. And again, it's all in coming down to project onto this feature space, which are the eigenfaces, and starting to understand how do eigenfaces uh, really help us understand to do face recognition, whether I'm looking at Meryl Streep or Hillary Rodden Clinton, how they project, how much do they look like Margaret Thatcher versus a picture of Margaret Thatcher I never had, and I project onto this. My little final example of this is, I, is me. It, <laughs> I take a picture of me, there's my face, and I say, I'm gonna project myself onto these 20 eigenvectors. So there's my projection onto the 20 eigenvectors. And if I reconstruct myself in that 20 eigenvector space, here is my representation, okay? And who do I look most like? I was kind of going to try to figure out, I was hoping I would look most like super handsome George Clooney, but it turns out I don't. What I mo look mostly like, and you could probably tell from the suit and tie, I look very presidential. So here's Obama, and my best projection are onto Obama pictures, and then here's Clooney. I le look least like Thatcher, and then I don't look too much like Matt Damon except for one picture of me, uh, of one picture of Matt Damon. That's probably when he was super awesome, Jason Bourne, because probably I, I probably look like something like that. You probably think I'm Jason Bourne, right? So <laughs> there we go. Presidential Jason Bourne with a little bit of super handsome Clooney. That's, that'd be a nice way to think of oneself. But this is all using these concepts of feature spaces to build out really interesting representations of, of, uh, of ourselves, of images, and really, I think, highlighting for us the role of eigenvectors and eigenvalues in creating a coordinate system, in this case, the eigenphase coordinate system. So hopefully this has been a little fun little uh, exercise in seeing the kind of things you can do. And again, it comes down to this concept of the eigenvalue and eigenvector, which are these very broad general representation tools, which are a coordinate transformation into which things become diagonalizable. And the eigenvectors themselves are features. Here, the features were these eigenfaces, but more generally in physics-based problems, these eigenvectors become these, in some sense, the best coordinate system for you to use for that system. So that's something we're gonna keep building on. You'll keep seeing eigenvalues, eigenvectors all the time throughout physics and engineering. Here I took it a little bit different direction with eigenfaces, but really mostly for the point of view to just highlight how powerful a concept this is. If you wanna download the data and code for this, it's all on the website here. You can click on the link on the description of this page. You get the notes, data, everything you need, and you can play around with this one. And it's kind of a fun little thing to play around with.